One of the tools geologists use is a petrographic microscope. We use the microscope to look at small-scale structures within a rock, and we also use it to determine mineralogy. In order to look at our samples under the microscope, we first have to make what's called a thin section, which is a really thin slice of a rock mounted to a glass microscope slide. We first choose where on the rock we want to take a closer look. In general, we target interesting structures, alteration features, or changes in rock type. Then, we cut the rock into what are called billets, which are smaller, evenly cut pieces of the rock that can be glued to the glass microscope slide. After the billets are glued to the slide, they are trimmed and ground down to 0.03 millimeters, or 30 microns. This is the standard thickness for a thin section. If we alter the thickness of our sample, it changes the way microscope light interacts with the minerals. Now that we have our thin sections, we use the petrographic microscope to take a look. What makes these microscopes special is they have two polarized filters. Light consists of wavelengths that move in multiple directions. A polarizer, shown as the gray disk in this animation, cuts out the different wavelengths and only allows light to move in one direction. For example, Many sunglasses have polarizing filters to protect your eyes. Since it cuts down on light from different directions, you may have noticed that screens like phones or TVs are difficult to look at while wearing these glasses. In the microscope, this filter is located between the light source at the base and the sample. This allows the unidirectional wavelength of light to travel up towards the viewer. We look at how light passes through the minerals in the sample with both one filter and a second filter which is located above the sample. The second polarizing filter in the microscope is known as the cross polarizer, which effectively eliminates all light coming between the two filters because the direction of light it allows in is perpendicular to the direction on the lower filter. However, when we place a rock sample between the filters, the minerals bend the light that would have been cancelled out by the second filter. Here's what it looks like through the microscope with only one filter. As we add in the second filter, the view turns black. When we add in the sample, we now see what are called interference colors, because the minerals interfere with the directions of polarized light. Colors are just one of the ways we can identify a mineral. We also look for other properties like relief, twinning, pleochroism, and extinction. This is an igneous rock called a gabbro. When we talk about relief, we look at how minerals stand out from one another. For example, the gray mineral, which is called olivine, has a high relief compared to the pale minerals around it, which are called feldspar. In cross-polar view, the feldspar has stripes, which we call twinning. This, along with the low interference colors, are primary identifying features of feldspar. Pleochroism refers to a shift in color as you rotate a sample. This sample is a gabbro like the last, but has been altered with biotite and serpentine. Biotite is the mineral that changes from brown to green as the sample rotates. This is a sample of quartz sandstone. In cross-polar light, quartz grains appear in gray tones. As the sample rotates, the grains cycle through different shades of gray. When the grains go completely dark, this is what we call extinction. This sample has three minerals which have been included in your kit. What you are looking at is a calcite vein in plain polarized light. The interference colors in cross-polarized light are very pale and almost look gray because the crystals are so fine-grained. Below is a mesh of serpentine and iron oxide. The serpentine is green in plain polarized light and grayish in cross-polarized light. The iron oxide is red in both kinds of filters. <laughs>